Welcome to another session of our Suna followers uh, class. And this is the class where we have been discussing for the past several weeks um, how to perform the prayer correctly from A to Z as taught to us and explained to us by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so inshallah, remember we talked about how the prayer consists of different pillars and the prayer consists of the sunans. And what's one of the number one purpose of us doing the sunans during the prayer? Like, why do we raise the hands before bowing? Why do we cross uh, the arms of the way we do? And why do we raise our finger when reciting El Tashahud? Who can answer that? What's the purpose? What's the number one? We know we get rewards, but what's the number one purpose of doing these things? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. The number one purpose of doing these things is to keep shaitan back so he won't mess with your kushur. Exactly. And that's what I wanted you guys to understand. You know, it's all about establishing kushur or that concentration, that devotion to Allah during the prayer where you're not so easily distracted from him. You know, and the way to help with that is by doing uh, those Sunna uh, parts of the prayer. You know, those things really work. And I'm telling you guys, for those of you who were having problems concentrating during the prayer, I'm telling you, start raising the hands before and after bowing. You know, hold that, raise that finger up and down when reciting Atayatulullahi. You know, start doing those Sunna actions and see if your concentration doesn't get better. And speaking of concentration, we spent the past couple of days uh, discussing Kushua. And let me put the questions up on the screen. We have a couple of questions here, just two questions for today. The first question, is it obligatory to have Kushua in the prayer? What's the most correct view? And give me your evidence, give me your dalil. Is it obligatory? What do you guys think? And give me your evidence. Do you have to have concentration? Do you have to have devotion towards the law? Do you have to have the humility, the calmness before a law and that concentration when praying? Is it something that we are obligated to try to work on developing? What do you guys think? And give me your evidence. Go ahead. Yes. Um, oh, is somebody else speaking? No, it's you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Kushu is oblig obligatory because um, Ibn Taymiyyah said, Allah said that, and seek help in patience and the prayer. And truly, it is extremely heavy and hard, except for um, Al Kushu. Exactly. That's one evidence. Any other evidences? That verse of the Quran, Ibn Taymiyyah is not a Dalil. I want you guys to remember uh, Dalil are the verses from the Quran or the authentic hadiths that address the topic. But Ibn Taymiyyah did mention that verse as his Dalil as evidence that it is an obligation. Anyone else with any other Dalil or, or um, uh, evidence? Another evidence would be that the Prophet Wasallam said, a person could leave the prayer and he wouldn't have any reward because he didn't have any kushul. Exactly. You guys remember that? That's another evidence. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in a beautiful, authentic hadith that there are some people that will walk away from the prayer with no reward at all due to their lack of kushul. 
you know, so that should tell you right there that this is something that we need to strive hard to try to attain and achieve when praying. Any other evidences? Anyone else? Any other evidences that uh, kushua in the prayer is an obligation? Any other? Uh, there, is one, there is one more hadith that says, whoever does a wudu properly, prays on time and does kushu properly, properly and perfect kushu is a promise from Allah that he will be forgiven. Mashallah, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi where he said, whoever uh, uh, um, uh, makes wudu, you know, performs the prayer perfectly with kushua, you know, he will walk away with reward. All of these are evidences. And this is why the majority of the scholars will tell you, yes, you have to have kushua. You know, the companions, the majority of the companions agreed. Ibn Umar, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Masood, they all agreed that kushur, doing the prayer, is something that we need to have. Everybody understand it? Any questions on that? Mashallah. Let's look at question number two. This is the last question. Who can give me some, ex give me an example of something that a person without kushua does when praying? If a person is lacking in kushua, what is something that that person may do that a person who has it wouldn't do during the prayer? Who can give me an example? It is one of the signs that maybe you need to work on your kushua. The person, would, the, the person would get like easily distracted and he will, you know, start like looking around him and things like that. Exactly. If you're one of those people <coughs> that becomes distracted very easily <coughs> during the prayer or you're always looking around to see what's going on around you, that may be one of the signs <coughs> that you have a problem with your kushua. Any other examples? Go ahead. Um, not being calm and like not reading the Quran correctly and just just skipping the ayats of the Quran. Okay, that's another great example. If you're one of those people you have skip over ayats, you're not calm, you know, you're fidgeting with your clothing, fidgeting with everything, and just uh, you know. This is a sign that you need to work on your kushur. Okay, and mashallah, we have Dr. Saeed here. And I like to have Dr. Saeed. If you can, Dr. Saeed, can you speak about uh, the importance of the kushur in the prayer? I wanted you to do it yesterday. I didn't know that you were here. Can you please uh, uh, speak about the importance of having the kushur? I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Kushur. <laughs> Let's give him a second to get his mic on. Dr. Saeed? Brother Haytham? Tarja? Yes, assalamu alaikum. Are you hearing me now? Yes, now we can hear him. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm in. You want to speak about it? At the kushur, the importance of kushur in the prayer. Yes. Uh, prayer consists of uh, two uh, issues. Uh, the first one, Bismillah uh, uh, rahim First one, uh, to move, uh, to recover, to recite, to uh, standing and pray, to make a sujood. This is a part of salah. The second part, it's a khushua. How to perform this uh, ibadat? You can you can stay stand up and you can you can make a ruku and sujood. The difference between this movement uh, outside salah and into salah, it's a khushua to understand to uh, think. You stand up uh, uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to understand 
when you recite you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you recite al-fatiha when you say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen uh, you must you must uh, not only uh, say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen by tongue not only by mouth but you need to recite from your heart you need to remember what is the places which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. Ah. When you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, remember please your eyes, your good mind. Remember you can able to walking in your leg, in your foot. You need to, uh, to remember you have eyes and you have ears and you have to, you are able to talk to to express about yourself. This is ala. This is a place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to remember khushua. Khushua. You need to understand your reward in your prayer depend on how many times you still in khushua in, during your prayer. Uh, Prophet Muhammad learn us. Peace be upon him. Maybe you pray, you perform, pray, and you will not take any reward from it. Or maybe you will uh, perform a prayer, and your reward is um, 50, uh, 50%, or, uh, or 40%, or 15%, or 10%. Why? It depends on a khushua. What's the meaning of khushua? Uh, your organs, your mind, your heart, your leg, your your hand, your body, uh, and be uh, uh, with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and pray. Khushu mean to stand up with your with yourself. Uh, tell yourself, I'm I'm in prayer. I'm in salah. I'm I'm talking for a uh, I'm talking to a Creator, the Sustainer, the Merciful. You need to understand. This meaning, it is not only to stand up and uh, sit down and make a ruku and make a good one to finish quickly, quickly. No, no, no. It means you need to pray, pray with your heart. Please careful, be carefully. Pray with your heart. Before you pray with your organs, with your body, pray with your heart. This is a summary if you want to complete, but I don't like to... Uh, uh, to change uh, this session, uh, go ahead, Sister Leif. May Allah bless you. That's what I wanted. So you guys understand him? Mashallah, his English is getting better and better. I understood everything. Subhanallah, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> See how he broke that down? So that's he gave the more depth, in depth meaning of kushur. So that's what you want to do, guys. You want to walk away from your prayer, you know, receiving the complete reward. Because you were so humble before your Lord, you know, you, you know, you humbled yourself. That's why uh, uh, the companions used to say, imagine that you are standing before your Lord. You know, if we imagine that Allah is watching us and this is a, and also as uh, Ibn Umar used to say, imagine that it's the last prayer that you will ever make. He said, uh, uh, just imagine that you won't even live to see the night if it's daytime. You won't live to see the it, day if it's nighttime. Yes, go ahead. It is, not on, it, it is not only imagination, but it is a true. Really, you are talking to, to Allah. Really, you speak to Allah. Really, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to you when you recite the Fatiha. When you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, oh, my abdi, say Alhamdulillah. My ha my my ab my my sins um, um, blessed me, may have mentioned me. And when we say, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Allah, Allah says, My sins uh, blessed me. When you call, when you say, Malik Yawmiddin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Oh, Abdi, make me my, uh, my Lord. Oh, I don't know. What I, uh, Malik Yawmiddin, Majadani Abdi. He thinks this is I Lord. This is I Lord from this universe. Uh, when we say Malik Yawmiddin, it is uh, you think this Allah is a Lord of this universe. 
when you say iyyaka na'budu iyyaka nasta'in Allah says ah my abdi ask me to help him ask me to to give him a guidance to give me uh, a guidance and and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the dua when you say iyyaka na'budu iyyaka nasta'in ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim sirat alladhina an'amta 'alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. الله سبحانه وتعالى says uh, this is uh, this is a dua and I accept your dua you know, I accept your dua when you say this, uh, this when you recite this uh, this is a supplication إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم you supplicated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the supplication and give you the guidance. If you say from your heart, we need to perform a salah with your heart. Pre prepare your heart to perform it before you enter a salah. We need to, to prepare your heart to uh, make your pray, your heart uh, pray with you. Not make your heart busy with the work, with your work shop, within uh, what I will do with my children, what I will do with my wife, my husband. Make your, take us a lot of, six, many time, five minutes, six minutes, ten minutes, only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to stop your life for uh, ten minutes, go pray with your heart and come back to a dunya, to your life. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So God, that's what we mean. We say empty your heart, you know, empty your heart of anything other than Allah. You know, don't think about the job. Don't think about the website. Don't think about television or anything. It's all about Allah. This is your time, your time to face your Lord, you know, and seek his forgiveness and seek help from him. MashaAllah. Wasn't that beautiful? That's why I love to have Dr. Saeed here. Because he's, he reminds me so much of Sheikh Morsi. He's so calming and uh, he reminds me so much of Sheikh Morsi. SubhanAllah. Okay, so mashallah, you guys did very good on this quiz. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to speak about what Dr. Said is talking about. How to prepare yourself. You know, how to empty out the heart. And how to prepare yourself you know, uh, before the prayer to, to have good uh, kushur. So let me put the PowerPoint up here on the screen. Uh, then hold on, let me close this up first. Everybody should be able to see my screen. And this is the index. And uh, yeah, here we go. We'll keep this open. So we're going to speak today about some things that we can do as Dr. Saeed was saying, things that we can do to strengthen our kushua before the prayer, okay? So that way when it's time to pray, you're ready. And let's look at the first thing. And again, there are many things that we can do. Uh, many of the things are sunans. For example, making wudu properly. A lot of, remember we talked about how, you know, the pillars of the wudu, just as there are pillars of the prayer, there are pillars of the wudu. We talked about how the nose, the mouth, doing the beard, these are sunans of the, of the wudu. We talked about how saying Bismillah is a sunan of the wudu and reciting the shahada after it is a sunnah. A lot of people ask Sister Layla, why perform those things? If I don't have to say Bismillah before I make wudu, if I don't have to recite the Shahada, you know, after making wudu, then why do it? Well, the reason why is it helps to strengthen your kushua. It becomes a great means of emptying, emptying your heart of this worldly, these worldly problems. Also brushing the teeth. Brushing the teeth is also a good thing to do before praying because it prepares your mouth. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant when he said, purify your mouths for the Quran. Remember the Quran, the, you know, you're going to be talking like he said, you're reciting that Fatiha. This is a, a talk between you and Allah. 
You want to speak to him with a clean mouth. That's why the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to always clean his teeth. He used to always brush his teeth when making wudu because he didn't want to stand before his Lord with bad breath, okay? So doing these things here, doing the sunans of the wudu, brushing the teeth, saying bismillah before and saying the shahada after will help to serve as a way of strengthening your kushur. Also, another way to strengthen your kushua before the prayer is to, again, check your clothing. We talked about this. Check your clothing to make sure that it's clean. Remember, Allah tells us the purpose of clothing. Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, O children of Adam, take your adornment by wearing clean clothes when praying. So you want to make sure that whatever you have on is clean. That's why, you know, there's no excuse for a Muslim woman nowadays to not have anything clean to throw on. There are so many praying gowns, praying kimars that you can buy off the internet or buy from Sister Jamila Pasha. You know, there's praying garments. You can make sure you throw one on over your clothing to make sure that it's clean. And we have to remember, as Dr. Saeed said, you are standing before Allah. Allah sees you. So who is more deserving of seeing you clean and beautiful other than Allah? So you wanna have clean, pleasant smelling clothing. You wanna make sure your breath is clean. You want to be relaxed. And again, another way to prepare your kushua before the prayer is by making sure that your aura, that your aura is properly covered. Okay? So you sisters want to check to make sure. We talked about how, you know, the garment can be tight, but it can't show the figure. You know, it can't show the skin. That's what we talked about before. But you want to make sure whatever you have on is covering your aura properly. And again, if you have those prayer garments, throw those prayer garments on, sisters. It's better. Okay? And also, for you brothers, if you are at the mosque waiting for the prayer, there are things that you can do to prepare your kushua too, such as repeating the adhan after the caller. We talked about this. The prophet says, see all these sunnah things, all these sunnah things that we covered about the prayer, all these sunnahs that we covered, you know, concerning, you know, repeating the adhan after the caller, you know, reciting of the supplication, all these things serve a purpose. And that purpose is to help us in developing our kushua. Okay, so again, you brothers, repeat the words. Repeat the words of the caller, okay? And then recite the dua after the adhan. And we talked about the supplication where we say, oh Allah, Lord of this perfect call and the prayer that's about to be offered, give Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the privilege of interceding for me and also the eminence and resurrect and, and, and resurrect him to the praised position that you have promised. So again, we recite these supplications and things, you know, not only for the reward they give us, but also they help to open that connection, open that connection between yourself and Allah. Okay? Also, another way to strengthen your kushua, and this is something that we have gotten away from, and that is by standing shoulder to shoulder and ankle to ankle. This closes the gaps between us, and it will keep shaitan from distracting us. Remember the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa said, align your shoulders. Close the gaps 
Yield your hands to your brothers and do not leave any gaps for shaitan. Whoever connects a line, Allah will maintain him. Whoever breaks it, Allah will cut him off. Unfortunately, uh, many Muslims today cut the lines and they wonder why Allah has cut himself from them in their personal lives, okay? We don't stand shoulder to shoulder. We don't stand ankle to ankle. You try to put your shoulder next to the person beside you and they push away. This is why there's so much enmity amongst us. This is why we don't have that brotherly love and that sisterly love we're supposed to have. Tarbia. Tarbia is becoming just as strange as Islam itself because we don't follow the Sunnah, even when it comes to our prayer. But if we did this, guys, this would help to strengthen our concentration during the prayer. You'll become less distracted by what's going on around you if you would stand properly. So these are just some of the things that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to do before the prayer that will help to strengthen your kushua. Remember, perform the wudu. And don't just do the pillars, do the sunans too. Make sure you take the water in your mouth, your nose. If you are a man, do the beard thing. Performing the sunnah of the wudu, such as saying bismillah before, and the shahada after it too, that will also open your connection with Allah and brushing your teeth, even though we don't have to brush our teeth when making wudu is something the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never failed to do. And he highly encouraged us to do it because it's a way of showing humility before your Lord. And also make sure that whatever clothing you are wearing is good and clean, that your aura is covered if you are a woman that your aura is covered if you are a man. And make sure the spot in which you are going to pray is clean. You know, make sure that there's no debris around. Okay, so those are some of the things to do before the prayer. And for those of you who are praying at the mosque, repeat the adhan after the caller. Recite the dua after the adhan. Recite the, the dua, the supplication between the adhan and ikama. And remember, guys, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said no supplication, no supplication, no supplication recited between the adhan and ikama is rejected. That's a good time to make your, your dua asking Allah for that wife you're looking for, for that job you need, for those shoes you need. And then finally, if you're at the mosque, you brothers, make sure you bring back the sunnah and stand close to the person next to you. Put a mask on. We're in Corona. Yeah, put the mask on. Double up if you want to. First of all, get the vaccine. And then double mask yourself. You're not going to be standing next to that person for long. And you got your protection on, two big masks, okay? Stand there ankle to ankle, shoulder to shoulder, and perform that prayer. So these are the things that the prophet taught us to do to develop the kushua before. And tomorrow what we're going to do is speak about uh, what we can do during the prayer things that we can do during the prayer that will help us to maintain that kushua. Okay, so I'll stop right here. Uh, if you guys have any questions, inshallah, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika. Any questions from Facebook or Zoom? Go Let ahead. I have one word, please, Sister yes. Layla. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Sai. If you let me feel. Also, uh, performing uh, sunnah before the obligation praying, the, the sunnah which you perform yes. before the obligation, before al-asr or al-maghrib or subh, it is exercise to pray uh, uh, salah, to pray, to perform a salah 
the obligation pray by a good way. If you exercise yourself, if you get practice with a sunnah and you have your intention is not uh, completely in pray, okay, it is exercise. It is exercise to, to perform the, the pray, the obligation pray with, by a good way. If you, uh, if you perform an addition pray and you didn't be with salah 100%, it is no problem. But you will try to accept from this, uh, from this case to complete your prey in obligation prey. Uh, yes. Our the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, learn us. The addition prey it is a guarantee for the obligation prey. When you increase. Uh, a sunan, a tatawa, for them to pray. If you, if you increase this prayer, it is, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be granted to uh, the obligation pray. The, so if you pray uh, sunnah before sop, it, it may be make you uh, practice yourself to how to perform the obligation pray. If you perform the sunnah to the the four before the the four rak'ah before zuhr or two before the also maybe uh, make you more comfortable in, in the obligation pray, more comfortable in the If you perform the sunnah before the maghrib, maybe it will be uh, practice yourself how to perform the Al-Maghrib, also Al-Isha, you need to exercise. Don't leave the Sunnah before the Salah. Don't leave uh, this addition pray because the more you try to increase your addition pray, the more you will get the sweetness of pray. If you get the sweetness, if you get Taste of sweetness of prey, uh, you will not leave us the prey forever until you will die. But if you didn't taste the sweetness of prey, uh, maybe you pray sometimes and you will leave prey a lot of times. You need to search for the sweetness of prey. You will take it, you will get it, this sweetness of prey, and Addition pray in night pray in sunan in when you stand up without any reason without any cause only for pray. I uh, will perform all obligation pray, but when you have sweetness of pray, I will uh, maybe why not? Why not? Uh, let me pray now. You will. Increase your prey without any reason. Your happiness will be in prey. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is still standing all night. But it is not obligation. But it is the meaning of sweetness of prey. He tasted the sweetness of prey. You need, I am not saying to you, standing all night. But... I told you, try to search for the taste of sweetness of prey. Sweetness of prey means when you stand up before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will forget everything around you. Only you remember I'm standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only remember I'm just, you, will, you will remember the meaning of ayah which you recited. You will get the sweetness of Quran, you will get the sweetness of Rukua, you will get the sweetness of Sujood, you will get the sweetness of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to get the sweetness of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to talk to him. You need to complain to him. Oh, oh Allah, I have problem in my work. I have problem in my, with, my, with my wife, with my daughter, with my son. 
where you will ask it him where will where is the places which you took uh, in sujood aqrab ma yakunu al-abd min rabbih wa huwa sajd the nearest place to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you make a sujood when you complain to him oh Allah I am very tired from this life please help me do you think if you ask him help me I need to you oh Allah I need to help me to guide me to you to guide me to give me your guidance I will leave you I no, no. no it is impossible you need to search for the sweetness of pray, the sweetness of pray, okay, of uh, reciting Quran, if you do practice, if you try and try and try, don't frustrate it. Sweetness of pray of a man, not will, it, it will not come immediately, but it needs to practice, to exercise, take exercise, to force yourself Ah, talk to yourself when you when you want to do things when you to succeed in work in company in any something ah, you force yourself you order that you, I must do that I'm not I'm not sleeping until finish my work I'm not not sleeping until ending my anything you know but you need to also emphasize you need you need to Keep practice. Give your mind. I am. Ha I have a, a purpose in this life to get a sweetness of prayer, to get a sweetness, sweetness of iman, to get a sweetness of ta. To be obedient to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. To be obedient. You want to be a doctor? Okay, no problem. But make also your purpose to be obedient, to obey Allah, to obedient, to. Make yourself one of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our uh, purpose in, the, in our life. You need to search for it. And we need to qualify it ourselves. You qualify it, um, your children, your, your daughter to be uh, a strong, to be a footballer, to be a swimmer, man. Okay, no problem. Also prepare yourself and your family to be obedient. To obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask yourself before do anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will agree when I do this thing or will be, will be disagreed, will be, dis, or will be angry. You need to make Allah in all, in all, in all deeds. You need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about everything. It is mean istikhar. To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about anything. Small and big, little and everything. Companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, achieve Iman by these ways. They search for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, search for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in eating, in drinking, in walking, in sleeping, in everything. You need to lay, you need. To be looks like them. This is my speech. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. That was just so beautiful, Dr. Said. I just wish we Muslims can get there, you know, because like he said, the companions were there. They had the kushur, you know, they had that connection, you know, with the law. They were able to free their hearts of this world. You know, and fill it with nothing but remembrance and and of and and the love of Allah. We need to get back to that, you know. And it's something that you know very few of us are at right now. Uh, any questions by anyone, Sister Sabrine? I'm sorry, did I unmute you? I know Sabrine got something to say, guys. Let me get her mic open. There you go, Sabrine. I I I, I agree. I agree with the doctor, and I, I this is. Dr. Saeed, uh, this is such a, a, a deepness within the, the heart, within the soul that allows us to, to come one-on-one -on -one with Allah wa to, to feel the closeness and the, the sweetness of him with us when we pray, when we pray, 
if we can just get to that that level where there's nothing else there except you and Allah and everything that you feel, everything that he has brought you through and taught you and keeps raising you, raising you in character, raising you in Dean, each time you make Salat, each time you make Salat, you get closer and closer to Allah. And he makes you stronger. He makes you stronger. Each Salat strengthens us. And it gives us wisdom, the wisdom that Allah wants us to have and that we need in order to get through this journey, this journey to Jannah, which is the most important thing. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Brother Haytham, would you like to add some words? Brother Haytham? Are you in the... Brother Haytham? Yes, yes. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to breathe the right way and may Allah give us that uh, ability to pray in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our prayers inshallah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us teach our kids how to pray in the right order. Jazakallah Brother Haytham, are the kids. brothers praying ankle to ankle and shoulder to shoulder in the masjids where you are? They are here. But are no, they no, no. To, you to, are? To, Two meters, two meters. Canada is two meters. Uh, uh, for social distance, because of the virus. The virus, uh, they're doing two meters. I have to go and ask uh, this weekend, uh, this Friday. I need to go and ask them what they're doing because they are doing it for the last three years. They don't change it for the last three years. And now the government said to them, you need to take it out. But people uh, in Canada, they don't want to take it out. They want to keep it. They want to keep half meter. So from meter, two meters to meter and a half to meter and half meter. Uh, like one, one, one person between each person. Like uh, you can say 60 centimeter. Between Sister the, Antar, at the mosque there, at where you live, they're not, they're shoulder to shoulder and ankle to ankle, Antar? Yes, they're shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, yeah all yeah. the mosques I know here are too, in uh, America. They were praying like we normally do. They may limit the amount of people. They only require uh, 20 people, but uh, we can stand and pray shoulder to shoulder. I mean, when I prayed with, uh, when Dr. Jamali was here this past weekend, uh, me and Israel and all of us were together. Me and the team, we prayed shoulder to shoulder, ankle to ankle, you know, and um, my brother Isa told me at the mosque, they prayed a regular way too. So Canada is still just the social distancing. Oh, I know when they did the Janazah prayer, they were all over the place. It's like, it didn't even look like a Janazah prayer. Like we were just spaced out so far away and all that. I, you know, like, mm. I didn't like how that was looking, but that's how they was doing it in Orange County. It was all spaced out. And they were spaced out for the Janaza prayer where you are. Yes, I mean, oh, yeah. it, was like, it was all over the place. It wasn't like a, a line like we usually supposed to do. It was like all over the place. It was. It was. Oh, yeah, Sabrina, you was there. I was there, and I remember that we were so spaced a, a, apart from each other. It was you more know? than six. It was more than six. It was leaders. way. I mean, it was way apart. You know, a brother even came out and told us. Remember, told mm -hmm. us. You know, inside the mosque, but that's maybe because the person died of COVID. But in the mosque, they're shoulder to shoulder. No, they didn't die. COVID. That was my ex. No, oh, he didn't right. die of COVID. Okay, okay, that's the last. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the last one. okay yeah. But they no. said they did say COVID was spreading out there in Orange County, and they were saying that you know y'all pray. You know, I'm like, if you have masks on, you have your mask. Everybody had was masked up. I'm like, you know, it seemed like we still could have prayed that prayer, that Janaza prayer, but everybody was masked up, the double mm -hmm. masks and everything. Some of them was so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. SubhanAllah. Yeah, any other questions or comments, guys? Alberta, they remove the mask and they pray normally, but it's up to the masjid administration. They can decide what to do. 
and uh, people in the masjid. So they left it for the mosque to decide in Canada and the mosque yeah. are choosing a social distance. They want to do it social distance and they always fight and fight and big conflict that this is not sunnah. Oh, the virus, the sunnah, the virus, the sunnah, the government. Government says it's not our business. You guys go fight in your own masjid. It's not our business. That's bad. Okay, guys. Well, alhamdulillah. I want to thank everybody for joining and participating. We do have another class tonight uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The class that so many of you email me about, alhamdulillah, I'm so glad you guys like it, to be loved by Allah. That's the class where we talk about the things that we can do in this world to earn the love of Allah. And that should be the focus of each and every one of us. You see, it all goes hand in hand. If we had the kushua when it comes to the prayer, then we would spend each day of our life as if it was, was our last on earth. And we would do the deeds that are pleasing to Allah in hopes of earning his love. But, you know, like the prophet said, the first thing to disappear will be the kushua. And that's why the Muslims are so messed up today and, and divided and enmity with each other and not performing their obligations, you know. But if we had that kushua, it would encourage us and push us and motivate us to move further and growing closer to Allah. So make sure you guys are here uh, at 8 p.m., which would be another uh, hour from now. Uh, for the To Be Loved by Allah class taught by myself. And also don't forget, we have the um, Hadith class tonight too at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I want to remind everybody that tomorrow is Friday. And that's when we have the Quran Tajweed. I have a couple of sisters on Facebook asking me for the Quran Tajweed. That's tomorrow night at 1130. If you guys go to the Sunnah Followers website, you will see the video. The video gives you the days and times of all the classes. So go to the website at sunnahfollowers.net. Watch the video. It's showing you the times. Okay? So uh, do that. And also, when you go to our website at sunnahfollowers.net, please, guys, donate to support this Dawah effort. You know, we are always in need of donations to support this Dawah effort. You know, we are a nonprofit organization. Please, guys, donate today to help pay for our website expenses, okay? All right, so I'm closing out on Facebook, but you guys can feel free to join us in the Zoom room. Supana kalahuma wa bihamtika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.